So why does a Fender USA bass like this cost so much more than a Squire bass like this? And is it really worth spending all that extra money? That is what I'm gonna answer in this video. <laughs> So before we start, I'll just say the playing you just heard there comes from a video I made a couple of years back comparing the sound of these two basses side by side. If you just want to hear those sound differences, then I'll put a link to that video below, but I'll also edit in some more clips from it as we go throughout this video. Also, I should say, this USA bass is currently strung with nylon tape wounds. If you want to hear how those sound specifically, then I've also got a video on that, which I'll put a link to as well. So on with the topic for this video, which is why is there such a big price difference between these two bases? And is it really worth shelling out all that extra money for a made in the USA base? I'm going to answer that question really, really directly and spell out where the difference in cost is and answer what are you getting in terms of better quality versus just paying for a name. I'm also going to talk about does something being made in the USA really add value and make a comparison to another really well-known American brand. But firstly though, what are these two bases I've got in front of me here? So on the left, the purple one is a 2013 made in China Squire Affinity Jazz Bass. And over here on the right, I've got a 2009 made in the USA Fender American Standard Jazz Bass. So in terms of the price difference, the Squire Affinity uh, was when I bought it back in 2013 and still is today around 200 pounds. The American Standard Jazz Bass they don't make any more, but when they last made them in around 2018, they got up to about £1,200. They've since been replaced by the American Professional Series, which is now up to about £1,600. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to say it's 200 versus 1200 so about £1,000 difference between these two. <laughs> moment I'm going to make quite a detailed comparison between the different elements on these two bases but before I do I just want to make the point that just because the American is six times more expensive uh, than the Squire it doesn't mean that it's six times as good and that's down to something called the law of diminishing returns which I just want to walk you through as it applies to Fender bases so we can understand this concept first. So let's walk through the law of diminishing returns using this graphic on screen and starting at level one the bottom end of the market we can buy a cheap Fender copy base for around £100, sometimes even less like on Amazon or maybe even in a supermarket. What I would say is at this price point, you are likely to see some quality issues, whether that's the quality of the finish or even worse, the quality of the playability. Certainly the hardware, the electronics are not going to be great at this price point. So then let's double our money and move on to level two. And this is where for £200, we can buy the Squire Affinity base. Now, it's twice the price. Is it actually twice as good though? Well, I'm actually going to say yes in this case, because I believe the Squire Affinity is a bass that just does what it needs to do. You can learn on it, you could record with it, you could gig with it, and it would just do the job. So we've got 100% better quality for £100 extra. So each 1% increase in quality, we've paid £1 for. Now let's move on to level three then, and double our money again to £400. For this price point, we can now get a Squire Classic Vibe Bass. It's twice the price of an Affinity. Is it twice as good? Well, I don't think so. The Affinity, as I've already said, does what it needs to do. The Classic Vibe, it's nicer, it's shinier, it's got some cool vintage elements, but it's not twice as good. I'm going to say it's 50% better. So we've paid an extra £200 for our 50% improvement in quality. So for every 1% increase in quality, we're now paying £4 extra. On to level four then, and doubling our money again to £800, we can now afford to buy a Made in Mexico Fender Vintera base. Now this is actually very similar to the classic vibe in terms of the overall look and feel of it. It probably is a better quality instrument, but how much better quality? It's hard to say. I'm going to go with it's 20% better now. So now we've paid £400 extra to get 20% extra quality. So each 1% increment is now costing us £20. 
and you start to see as you move up through the levels you end up having to pay more and more to get those slight improvements in quality. Finally then level 5 and doubling our money for the last time all the way up to £1600 we can now finally afford to buy the full made in the USA American professional base. So twice the price of the Mexican base is it twice as good? Well, certainly not in my opinion. The Mexican Vinteras are already really nice bases. The Made in the USA certainly brings in some more premium feel and some extra features, but it's not twice as good. How much better it is, hard to say. Again, I'm gonna say it's about 20% better. So now an extra 800 pounds for 20% extra quality is 40 pounds for every 1% improvement we get. Now you might not agree with all the numbers I've got on the page here, and that's fine. They're really just there to illustrate the concept and help explain why just because a base is twice the price doesn't mean it's gonna be twice as good. So now onto the direct comparison between the two bases. And before I start, I should say they're both very, very similar. So they're obviously both four string jazz bases. They both have two single coil pickups. They both have passive electronics with volume, volume tone. Both have Alder bodies maple necks and rosewood fingerboards. So this one was made before Squire switched to using India Laurel on the fingerboards. So on paper, the specs are very, very similar, but there are some differences. And I'm gonna break them down into three categories then. So first, features. So I'll look at, does the American have additional features which add to the cost and value of it? Secondly, I'll look at quality and say, is the American a superior product, which adds to the cost and value? And then thirdly, look at the branding, and is it worth paying extra for that Fender name on the headstock and for knowing that your base was made in the USA? So then looking at features, there's one really obvious feature that the American bass has that the Squire doesn't. And you can't actually see it here because it's a case. So the American standard comes with a hard shell, molded plastic case. It's a really nice case, but it's also a really big case. And when I try and put it in the boot of my car, it doesn't fit and I end up having to lay it across the back seats. So it's actually a bit annoying. Um, it has a value though, right? So when you buy this base, the case is part of the package. If you were to buy that case independently, it would cost around 130 pounds now, but you could buy a Fender gig bag for 17 pounds. So does it add value to the package? Yes. Does it add value to the base? Probably not. Is it worth paying for? Matter of personal opinion. In terms of features on the actual bases themselves then, the most apparent difference is that the American has through body stringing, whereas the Squire just has a top loading bridge. Now, does this make a difference? Well, to do the through body stringing clearly adds an additional process, which adds to the cost of manufacturing the base. Uh, does it make a difference to the sound? Well, some people think it adds additional resonance and additional sustain. My personal view is the original 60s jazz bases, they always had the top loading bridge, They've been good for 50, 60 years and people still paying thousands for them, so it can't be all that bad. But it kind of definitely is an upgrade to see that through body stringing on the American. The final feature which I want to call out that the American has, which the Squire doesn't, is it actually has graphite rods running up through the neck. Now, those are there for two reasons. Firstly, Fender claims that the graphite rods help prevent dead spots. So anyone who's ever owned a Fender bass knows on the G-string in particular, particularly around this kind of 5th, 6th, 7th fret area, you always get some kind of slightly dead notes there. Now, on this particular American bass, they're still a little bit dead in that area. But actually, when I compare it side by side with the Squire, it is an improvement. So, do the graphite rots 100% prevent dead spots? No. Do they improve it? Maybe. The second reason I believe they're there is to give the neck extra stability so that it moves less when the temperature or humidity changes. From this point of view, I don't think it really adds any value at all. Actually, this base, any time there's any kind of change in temperature, the neck moves and I need to reset the relief on it, whereas the Squire's a lot more solid. The only thing I can say in its favour is when I do adjust it, 
it adjusts really nicely and you know any tweak of the truss rod it really takes and is really easy to make those changes. I'm now going to move on to talk about the quality differences between these two bases and this is where the extra money that you're paying for the American really comes into play. So I'm going to start at the headstock end and the first thing you'll notice is the American has a gloss finish to the front of the headstock. Now does that make any difference to the playing experience? No. Does it make you feel like you've got a more finished premium product? Definitely. I really like that feature. The other thing at that end of the, the base is the tuners. So this is where there's a real difference. So the American has really nice, lightweight, possibly made by hip shop tuners. Um, they're really sleek, work really well. The Squire has probably the worst tuners I've ever seen on any base ever. They actually fall apart and when they're not falling apart, they rattle. So they kind of keep the base in tune fine. They're just a right pain so really not very good quality there maybe a cheap fix but it's annoying and they should really improve that moving down to the neck this for me is the most important factor in terms of playing experience and this is where the American Fender really starts showing its quality versus the Squire so in terms of shape and profile they're actually very similar the Squire might be a tad bit fuller at the nut and the fender a little bit slimmer, but there's really not a lot in it. And in terms of fret work, neither of these bases has the greatest fret job ever, but they're not awful either. It's pretty comparable there. Where the difference comes though, it's just in the feel of the neck on the fender when you put your hand around it. It's hard to explain, but I think there's two things that come into play. First, the fender has rolled fingerboard edges to make it feel more played in, and I think that helps. But secondly, the finish on the back of the neck. So the Squire is very unfinished, quite raw feeling, kind of feels like maybe it needs a bit more work in the factory or something, whereas the Fender has a really nice satin finish on the back. It's really polished without being sticky and feels really premium. And this is actually one of the nicest bases I've, uh, I've ever played really in terms of that feel of the neck. Coming down to the bodies, they both have these glossy urethane, polyurethane finishes. Now Fender claim that on the American Standard Series, they've applied a thinner finish for greater resonance. Really hard to say whether that actually makes a difference. And you might also think that they possibly select higher quality alder for the body in the more expensive guitars versus the Squires. Again, really hard to say whether that makes a difference. What I would say in terms of resonance, I've generally found that this particular American Fender bass um, has a more kind of mellow, darker sound to it, um, whereas the Squires may be a little bit more spanky. So whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I guess is a matter of taste and what sound you're going for. But it's hard to say that because it's a more expensive bass, it's got more resonance and there's any value add there. Looking at the bridges then, there's a clear difference here. So the Squire has the kind of traditional bent steel bridge, very basic, but does the job. The Fender clearly has a much more higher quality product on there. It's kind of got this high mass element at the back, which is kind of halfway towards a badass bridge maybe. On the saddles, it's actually got these three grooves so you can set the different string spacing. I find that really useful. So much higher quality product in terms of the bridge. Does that make any difference? Now, some people say high mass equals uh, more sustain. Do I notice that? Personally, not really. I find the traditional bridges do the job just fine, but it's definitely an upgrade. Regarding the electronics then, I recently complained in my Squire Telecaster video that the knobs and electronics were a bit rubbish, but actually on this Squire Affinity base, these are absolutely fine. Now I can tell on the Fender bass that these knobs move more smoothly, feel higher quality, but no issue with the ones on the Squire. Little bit of an upgrade on the Fender. Lastly then on the quality front, I wanna focus on pickups. 
So in the Squire we get some very nondescript Squire standard single coil jazz bass pickups which probably just translates as ceramic magnets whereas over on the Fender we get actual Arnico 5 magnets in the pickups designed to be a lot more vintage accurate. But what difference does this make in the real world? Well, in my experience these two bases actually sound quite similar, have a very similar level of output. If anything, the Fender can sound slightly fuller and have slightly more bass response um, in some circumstances. But I've said before, this is naturally a darker, mellower sounding bass compared to some. So how much of that I can attribute to the pickups themselves is hard to say. Anyway, I could talk about pickups all day, but it'd be nowhere near as useful as you just hearing it for yourself. So I'll edit in some clips now and you can make your own mind up about which sounds the best. So now we've looked at the differences in terms of features and the differences in terms of quality which might explain why these two bases have such a different price tag. But of course that's not the full story and I want to go on to talk about branding. Basically, do those words Fender and Made in USA on the headstock actually add value to this base? And I want to break that out into two parts. Firstly, the manufacturing in USA versus China, does that result in a better product? And then secondly, the Fender name itself, is that worth paying extra for? So on the first point about production in the USA, that definitely results in a more expensive product. Now that's partly because the cost of manufacturing and the cost of staffing there is greater. And it's partly because if you're outside of the USA, then the exchange rates and import duties and all that stuff can make it quite expensive sometimes to buy American products. But those extra costs don't actually result in a better quality product necessarily, and they don't actually add any value to the end consumer. And this is why I want to talk a little bit about Apple. So if you look at my laptop here and phone here, these are both very high-end products made by an American company, but they're manufactured in China. Now, I don't hear anyone saying, can you please get me a made in USA iPhone or a made in USA laptop and charge me six times the price for it, please? No, people see these as high quality products and take them as they are. The Chinese, the Indonesians, the Mexicans, whoever, all these countries are very capable of manufacturing high quality products. And if you look, for example, at the Squire Classic Vibe guitars and basses, you'll see the quality that you're getting there for like three or four hundred pounds. Now, if you said to those guys, can you make me a guitar, but you've got a price point to work to of a thousand pounds or fifteen hundred pounds, imagine the quality that they could achieve as well. So... Does the Made in USA thing on Fender really add value? For me, no. If I was an American and I wanted to support my local economy, would I be minded to buy it? Maybe, but do I believe that these products could be made to the same quality elsewhere? Absolutely. So in a way, it's part of Fender's branding, the Made in USA. It's part of the saying, this one's made in America, so it must be one of the really good ones, so we can charge you a bit more for it. The second point about the branding then is in the words themselves. Fender, made in the USA. Do those words on the base add value in their own right? And when we think about this, we need to remember that for many of us, from a young age, from when we first started playing guitar or bass, Fender's marketing and branding was working at you, telling you that Fender's were the pinnacle, the legends use them, they are authentic. But not just Fender, other musicians, other guitar players and bass players telling you Fender USA, that's the one to get. And then it becomes like a dream to own one of these instruments. And, you know, a relative of mine recently bought a Strat. And this is someone who's a good 15 years older than me and said, you know, it had to be a USA Fender. I don't want a Japanese. I don't want a Mexican one. It has to be USA Fender. And, you know, for 
a more mature person, it's like a lifelong dream going out and buying that Made in the USA strap. And, you know, I identify with that. When I bought this Made in the US base, that was my first American Fender. And it was like, yes, I've made it. So... Rightly or wrongly, this is a dream ingrained in many of us guitar and bass players that we want to own a Made in the USA Fender. Um, does it add value? Unfortunately, yes it does, whether you like it or not. As we're coming to the end of the video, I want to take a closer look at this £1,000 price difference between these two bases and give my view on how that's made up and what you're really paying the extra money for. So firstly, those extra features, the hard case, the through body stringing, the graphite rods, I'm going to say they make up about £200 out of that £1,000 difference. Whether those features add value to you, I guess is a matter of opinion, but they certainly add cost to the making of the bass. Secondly then, the extra quality, so the feel of the neck and just the overall premium feel of the product. It costs money to make a base that feels this good, right? So I'm going to say that makes up £500 out of the £1,000 difference. Then lastly, that leaves us with £300, which you're paying for branding. Basically, you're paying for the Fender name on the headstock. So well done if you made it this far in the video. I want to close out just by really directly answering that original question of is it really worth spending so much more to get this USA Fender versus the Squire? And for me, that answer is yes, it is. The reason for that is I believe this is a base that can last me a lifetime no matter what I do. So whether I'm making YouTube videos at home like this or I'm recording or I'm headlining the pyramid stage at Glastonbury or playing for the Queen, this base will always be good enough. I see these being used all the time at the absolute top level of the professional end of the industry. Now, of course, there's other bases that you can buy which are more expensive and so, so better. But, you know, once you've got this, you've made it. It's always good enough. As for the Squire, unfortunately, this base will never do that job. It's the type of base which is great for a beginner, works really well for learning on, but there'll always come a point where you want to upgrade it. Now there are other bases from Squire like the Classic Vibes or some of the Fender Mexican stuff which for most people could last them a really long time. Unfortunately for the Affinity series, for most people it's just going to be that beginner base until you get to that stage uh, where you just need something better. So based on that I really do think it's worth spending the extra, in my case at least, to get the higher quality instrument and the piece that will last forever.